this crochet tutorial, I will be teaching you how to create the cottage book sleeve. For this pattern, you'll need approximately 290 yards of DK weight yarn, scissors, a 5mm crochet hook, measuring tape, tapestry needle, and optional stitch markers. For this pattern, you're going to want to have at least two colors, though you could make it all in solid color, a main body color and a contrasting color for our scallop edging that we'll be adding. You could also have a third color if you wanted for the bow, though the bow looks great in the same color as your trim. First thing you'll want to do is create a gauge swatch so that you can make sure your yarn and hook will work and that your book sleeve will come out the right size. The one special stitch that I do want to show you is not necessarily special in that it's just a double crochet, but we need to make sure that we're working it around this chain space. So what you'll actually do when you get to that double crochet back loop only is you're going to go through the back loop. But you're also going to go under that chain rather than going through it and avoiding that chain like that you want to make sure that you go under the chain as well and draw up your loop so that you have still have your yarn and it's on the other side of the chain so that when you go to complete your double crochet as normal it's actually going to go around that chain and hide it inside of your double crochet so again you'll go through the back loop and underneath that chain two from the row below and then work your double crochet around it as normal and that just hides it within those double crochets you should have 20 stitches in four inches and 17 rows in four inches the first thing we need to do with the pattern is make a slip knot we'll start with a slip knot and a chain to make your slip knot make a loop putting your tail over the top of your working yarn bring the tail around to the back and then going through the loop on the right side of that, pull your tail through, and that will make your slip knot, which is adjustable. And now that we have that slip knot, we'll go ahead and start our pattern. We're going to be creating the front of our, of our book sleeve first. To begin, we will chain 50. And there's our chain of 50. Next, we are going to work our row one and our row one is going to be single crochets all the way across. So place a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then each stitch across. Now with this pattern, we are going to be creating the front and then it is kind of worked in one single piece, even though we do detach, but we're just gonna work our front piece and then we'll take, we'll cut our yarn and then we will actually work uh, the back piece off of the bottom of the front piece. So it is kind of important that when you do this first row into the chain that you're using those back bumps. And by what I mean by the back bump is you've got the side of the chain that gives you that regular V looking stitch and on the back you have these little bumps. So you want to try as best you can to go into these bumps so that we have a very like clean and stitch like looking bottom right there to work into when we come back and do our back piece. Okay, and now that is our first row. You should have a total of 49 stitches at the end of this row. Okay, and now for row two. To make row two, we are going to chain one, turn, put a single crochet in that first stitch, and then we are going to work a repeat across of chain two, chain two, skip two, and then single crochet the next. And we're going to do that 16 times. We're going to chain two, skip two, single crochet all the way across. Chain two, skip two, single crochet the next. And then there's our last repeat, which should bring us to the very last stitch with that little single crochet in. And there is the end of row 
too. Now you should have, again, 49 stitches and we are counting each of those chains as a stitch. All right, and now we've got that. We're moving on to row three. We're going to chain one and turn. We're going to half double crochet in that first stitch. Because this is the only one that we work into the stitch regularly, I made it a half double crochet just to make that height the same because our next stitch, we're going to be going down into our row one. So just like I showed in the example for the, the gig swatch, these double crochet back loop onlys are going to be worked into row one into the back loop and you're gonna to want to make sure that you also go under that chain space. So make sure you're not doing this where the chain space is behind your hook. You're also going under so it's over your hook. And then you're going to draw up a loop and complete your double crochet as normal. Okay, one more time into the back loop and also under the chain two and double crochet as normal. And then next we will work a front post double crochet and this is going to start our repeat that we're going to work all the way across 15 times for a total of 15 times and once you get across there should be just the last stitch left which we'll put another half double crochet in so the repeat is going to be front post double crochet around the single crochet of row two and then double crochet back loop only into that stitch from row one. Again, making sure we're going around the chain as well as into that back loop so that the chain is then hidden inside of those double crochets. So again, the repeat's going to be front post double crochet around the single crochet, double crochet back loop only, two times, and that's our repeat. So continue that across until you have one stitch left. All right, and we've done those repeats and now I've got one stitch left. So I'm going to half double crochet into that last stitch. So again, let's do chain one, turn, we're gonna do row four. And this is our wrong side. This is the texture of our wrong side. So row four, chain one, turn, single crochet that first stitch, and then repeat across, chain two, skip two, single crochet. Again, chain two, skip two, single crochet, and we're going to repeat that all the way across. So All right, and there is a completed row four. So next, we'll chain one, turn our work, gonna half double crochet in that first stitch, and then double crochet back loop only the next two. And then we will start our repeats. So we will front post, double crochet, the next and double crochet the back loop only of the next two. Again, the repeat is front post double crochet the next and then double crochet back loop only the next two. And we will repeat that all the way across until we just have the one stitch at the end. And then once they're at the end, you should have one stitch left and you're gonna put a half double crochet in that stitch. That is the end of row five. You should have a total of 49 stitches. All right, and those two rows are what you're going to repeat and continue to do until you have 25 rows for this front piece. And remember when you're counting your rows to count those single crochet and chain rows because they get pretty hidden in there. So don't forget to count those as you're going. And I will meet you back here when you've hit 25 rows to show you what to do next. All right, 
So now we have 25 rows and we have finished our front piece. Before you cut your yarn and move on to the back piece, you are gonna wanna measure to make sure that you've got the right size that you need. You want this to be six inches tall. Um, if it's not, you're going to want to add some more rows or if it's a little bigger, you're going to want to remove some rows and you do need to end on one of those row five repeats with the double crochets, not on one of the single crochet and chain rows. So we can go ahead and cut our yarn and move on to our back piece. So for our back piece, what we're going to do is we're going to actually flip over so that we have that beginning chain and you want to be on the wrong side of your work. So not the one with that texture, but this texture on the wrong side of your work. And we're going to be working in to the chains. So you're going to attach your yarn on the right side into the very first stitch on the right. And we're gonna only work into the front loop of that chain. That's why it was so important that we work into the back bumps and we leave those V's for us to use because we need to use front loops and back loops. It's not a huge deal if you just have to work in the, into them regularly. It's just to kind of keep the texture consistently going um, even at that fold. So we'll attach our yarn to that first front loop all the way to the right. We're going to chain one and then we're going to single crochet into that same loop that we attached to. And then we are going to begin doing our two row repeat that we used to make our front piece. So you're gonna chain two, skip two, single crochet, front loop only. Chain two, skip two, single crochet, front loop only. Chain two, skip two, single crochet the front loop only and we're going to repeat that all the way across there is row one of that back piece done you should have 49 stitches again counting the chains as stitches now we're going to continue our repeating of those two rows so for row two of the back piece we'll chain one and we'll turn our work and now we will half double crochet in that first stitch. And then you're going to double crochet back loop only into the next two stitches. And if you were worried that this was like pulling up a lot because we were only in that front loop, when we come through and we do this next row into those back loops, it's gonna pull it in. It's gonna pull it in and make it um, sit more flush with the bottom of that front piece. So front post double crochet the single crochet double crochet back loop only the next two again front post double crochet around the single crochet double crochet back loop only into that chain and just like we did before we're just going to repeat that across And now we will put a half double crochet in that last stitch. And that finishes the second row of our back piece. You should have, again, 49 stitches. All right, now row three, we'll chain one and turn. And now we will do that single crochet chain two row, but we'll do it regular. We won't do it into the front post like we did that first time. That was just to get us on this side so we have our fold there. So now we'll just do it as normal, chain one, single crochet first, chain two, skip two, single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet, and repeat that all the way across. And then we're done with that third row. And again, 49 stitches counting those chains. Next, we will chain one, turn our work, and now we're going to do our double crochet row. So half double crochet the first one, double crochet back loop only the next two,
and then begin that repeat of a front post double crochet followed by two double crochet back loop only. And repeat that across until we only have one stitch remaining at the end. And once we come to the end, we're going to half double crochet in that last stitch. And now you can see that you've started working your back piece. We're going to work until it's the same size as our front piece. That will be 24 rows for the back piece. I know this side was 25, but that's because we had that first row on the starting chain. We didn't need to do that for the back piece because we worked into that first row again ourselves. So continue your repeat of single crochet chain two rows and double crochet rows until you have 24. All right, now once you've reached that 24th row, we're just gonna pause for a second because this is where, if you want to, you can place some stitch markers because these are this, this is what we're gonna sew together at the end in order to make the pocket. So if it would be helpful to you, um, you might want to just mark on either side this row because it's gonna be just to help you because later we'll be folding this and sewing these sides together. And now you're gonna keep going. You're gonna do four more rows, so two more repeats of the chains and the double crochet, and then we're gonna start decreasing to make our flap. All right, and once you've gotten those uh, 28 uh, rows on the back, before we move on to decreasing for our flap, we're gonna do one more measurement to make sure we're still on track for the size of our book sleeve. So we want to make sure that the height of this is at least 12 and three quarters. So you want it to be 12 and three quarters tall. Um, you can add or uh, remove rows from this back piece as needed to hit that measurement, um, but make sure that you land on the repeat of the double crochet row and not the chain rows. Okay, and once you've had that, we'll go ahead and keep going and we will start decreasing for our flap. So you're gonna chain one, you're gonna turn your work, and you're going to do two decreases for this round. So single crochet two together over those first two. And then single crochet two together over the next two. And then from here, we're going to do our chain two, skip two, single crochet across until we have six stitches remaining. So we're going to do that repeat, chain two, skip two, single crochet, 13 times across. All right, I've done that 13 times across. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six left here. So we're going to chain two, skip two, and then we're going to single crochet two together and then single crochet two together. And that is row 29, and you should have 45 stitches, counting those chains. Row 30 now, you'll see that um, we have two, and then there's that, and usually we only have one. So we're going to double crochet two together here, and that should line us up to do our repeat of a double crochet back loop to front post next and we're going to repeat that across 13 times so double crochet back loop only two front post double crochet next and we'll repeat that across
And once we get to the end and we have those last two stitches, we're gonna double crochet two together over those last two. And that should bring your total for row 30 to 43 stitches. All right, and now we're going to do row 31. So we'll chain one, we'll turn. Again, we're gonna do two decreases, so single crochet two together. And then again, single crochet two together. And then we'll start the repeat of chain two, skip two, single crochet across until we have six left. So that's a total of 11 times. Okay, now we have six left. So we're gonna chain two, skip two, single crochet two together and then single crochet two together and that's the end of row 31 and you should have a total of 39 stitches now for row 32 we'll chain one turn we're gonna double crochet two together And then we'll start that pattern of two double crochet back loop only and then a front post double crochet across uh, 11 times until there's until we're at the end till there's four left and then when you get to the end you're gonna double crochet back loop only two and then to finish off the row we're gonna double crochet two together and this should bring your total to 37. 37. So see, we're starting to get a nice little decline. And we're going to keep going like this until we get to a point. Okay, and now for row 33. So chain one and turn. Again, the single crochet rows we're going to do, we're going to start off with two decreases so single crochet two together and then again single crochet two together and then we're going to do chain two skip two single crochet nine times moving across until there's six stitches left at the end what's nice about the when we start decreasing is each row starts to go faster and faster, especially when we're doing uh, the single crochet rows. They're already the faster row, and then we decrease two times on either side. And this was basically just so um, you could keep the pattern going pretty easily with where the double crochet started. And then we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna chain two, skip two, and single crochet two together and single crochet two together and this should give you a total of 33. all right and now row 34. so we will chain one turn our work double crochet two together and then start our repeat of double crochet back loop only two, front post double crochet next. And then repeat that across nine times. And once you've repeated that nine times, you should have four stitches left. So we'll back loop or double crochet back loop only two times and then finish the row off by double crocheting two together which should bring your stitch total to 31. Now row 35, we'll chain one, turn our work, single crochet two together, single crochet two together, and then we'll start our repeat of chain two, skip two, single crochet, We'll do that seven times. Okay, 
So you should have six left. So then you'll chain two, skip two, single crochet two together, and then single crochet two together. And that will give you 27 stitches for row 35. And now for row 36, chain one, turn, double crochet two together, and then begin our repeat of double crochet back loop only two, front post double crochet next. We'll do that for a total of seven times. And there's our seventh repeat. And then next we will double crochet back loop only two. And then finish off the round or row with double crochet two together. And that should give you a total of 25 stitches. Okay, and now for row 37. Chain one, turn, single crochet two together, single crochet two together, and then begin the repeat of chain two, skip two, single crochet, five times across, two, three, four, five, you should have six left, chain two, skip two, single crochet two together, and single crochet two together, and that should finish off the row with 21 stitches. Now for row 38, we'll chain one, Turn our work, double crochet two together, and then we'll start our repeat of double crochet back loop only the next two, front post double crochet the next, and we'll do that five times. Right, and that's our fifth time and then we will double crochet back loop only two and double crochet two together to finish off the row and you will have a total of 19 stitches at the end of this row okay and now for row 39 chain one turn gonna single crochet two together Again, single crochet two together, and then begin our repeat of chain two, skip two, single crochet. And we're gonna do it three times this row. So one, two, and three. So there should be six more. Chain two, skip two, single crochet two together, single crochet two together. And you should have a total of 15 stitches at the end of that row. Row 40, chain one, turn your work, double crochet two together, and then begin your repeat of two double crochet back loop only, front post double crochet, and we're going to do that three times. And then we're going to double crochet back loop only two. And then finish off the row with a double crochet two together, which will be our stitch count for row 40 to 13. Now for row 41, we'll chain one, turn our work, single crochet two together. single crochet two together, chain two, skip two, 
skip two, single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet two together, and that is a total of nine stitches. Row 42, chain one, turn your work, double crochet two together, double crochet back loop only in the next two, front post double crochet to next, double crochet back loop only the next two, and then finish off the row with double crochet two together, and you should have a total of seven stitches now. Row 43 is going to be our last row of the, um, the main body of our book sleeve. So chain one, turn your work, double crochet, two together, chain one, skip one, double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet, two together. And that creates our holes that we'll use to put our ties through on our on our book sleeve to keep it closed. All right, and now we can go ahead and fasten off and move on to the next part of our book sleeve. All right, now that we have the whole thing crocheted, the next thing to do is to uh, close it up so that it can have a book put into it. Um, well, how we're going to do that is I had you mark, if you wanted to, um, where the 24th row of the back piece was. So you should be able to just fold right sides together, your front piece over your back piece, and then you're going to want to seam either side together. I like to anchor mine down by just tying a couple knots in them once I go through that so I can take my stitch marker off. And then we'll seam those together and you should have still a couple, those four rows on the back of your stitch marker should sit up above your fold. And that's so when it goes over it's covering that side and because the book is going to add some width you're going to want to have a little bit of that same coverage before it starts decreasing because that's why we do it like that all right and now let's seam and there we have it all seamed together and now we can flip it right side out and you'll see that that row is right on the bottom there and there we have it that's the main body of the book sleeve so now all that we have left to do is add our trim to our flap and then create our bow for closing. So for our flap, we're going to turn it so that we have the right side facing us. We are going to use our main color first, just to create our single crochets, to create single crochets around for us to put our scallop edging into. So you're going to want to attach it into row 25 of your back piece that row just above where you seamed to. Attach your main color there. You're gonna chain one. And then we're going to single crochet up and to the corner. And we wanna place 25 single crochet evenly across here. So 
So once we make it to that corner, we're gonna chain one, and then we're just gonna put a single crochet in each of those five stitches across the last row of the flap. You can go into the chain or around the chain, it doesn't really matter. Either way, three, four, five, all right, and that takes us over to the other side so that we can chain one, and then we are going to evenly work down. Again, we wanted to have 25 total. All right, and there we go. We've done that first edge. So we can fasten off with the main color, and then we will create our scallops. All right, so that's that edge finished. So now what we're going to do to finish this off is add our scallop edging. So if you want, this is when you would switch to a contrasting color. You could just do it in a, in a single color if you wanted to, it's totally preference. Um, I'm gonna do it in this white color. So what we're gonna do for the scallops is we're going to attach, right side facing you, attach to the fifth stitch of this first row of edging. So we have one, one, two, three, four, five. It's right there. It should be just about where that corner is when it starts to work up the slope of the flap. So we're going to attach our yarn there to that fifth stitch. We're going to chain one and we're not going to work into that. We're going to skip one and then we're going to place four double crochet in the next. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to skip, skip one, and we're going to slip stitch into the next to anchor down that scallop. So we have that nice little rounded scallop. All right, and now we're just gonna, going to repeat that process all the way across to the other side. So skip one, four double crochet in the next. Skip one, slip stitch. Skip one, slip stitch, skip one, which is that chain, and we are going to count that, so skip the chain, and then four double crochet in the next. Skip one, slip stitch, skip one, four double crochet in the next. Skip one, which is again that chain, and then slip stitch. So this should give you scallops on either side of where that tie is gonna go, and then you should have five down the side. All right, and then we're going to continue that down the other side. So we just slip stitched, so we will skip one, four double crochet, Skip one, slip stitch. And our last one, skip one, four double crochet. Skip one and slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So you should have a total of 12, five on one side, two across that last row, and then five on the other side. And then you can fasten off. And there's your scalloped edge.
And now we will make the bow that we'll use to keep our book sleeve closed. I'm going to use my white and just do another a white bow. You could also do it with a third color. You could do it with the main color. Um, I think this one would just look really cute with just continuing the white contrast. So for our bow, we're going to start with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 61. All right, and once you have 61 chains, you're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook and then each chain across. All right, and once you've slip stitched all the way across, that's it for the bow, really easy. So you can fasten off and leave in those ends. And then there's two different ways that you could attach your bow on. So you could either sew down the middle. I say do it about a third of the way up from the bottom of your bag and you just sew the middle down because you're gonna be putting either end through those holes we left so that you can tie your bow shut. Or you can just kind of push it through one of those post stitches in the middle like that and that will anchor it and then if you want you can move it up and down like if you put a smaller book and it's going to reach down a little bit further you can move it down to one of the lower ones or move it up if you're putting a bigger book in so it is totally your preference which way you would like to do it and it's really easy to just kind of poke it through like I can do it with my fingers I don't need a hook or a needle or anything to do it and that's not even stretched out that's a brand new stitch and then you can put one in through one of those holes and the other in through the other hole. And you can tie your bow to shut your book sleeve. And that is how you make a cottage book sleeve. The cottage book sleeve is great for books. Um, pretty much any book that is of the like standard tall, paperback style fits really nicely in there. Um, I also think that it works really well for things like your notebooks or uh, planners. Like the smaller ones, you couldn't put a like 8x5x11 five by in here, obviously, but like I can store all of my little designer stuff in here. Um, they fit books up to a pretty good size. I have this giant, all three books of the Lord of the Rings. I think it's like 1200 pages and I can actually get it in here. Of course, the flap doesn't flap over it as well as some of the smaller books, but I can still get it in there if I want to. So it fits a pretty good range of um, books. If you're reading giant books, you can still get them in there. I hope that you enjoyed making the cottage book sleeve. I would love to see your book sleeves. If you share them on Instagram, just tag me at woodland.stitchcraft. You can find links for all of the tools I use, like my scissors, my hook, my stitch markers, and my yarn down in the description. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video.